everybody loves talking about the economy all year around and it's not just a budget thing. Well, from Hyderabad, we have Charu Hassani to talk about the rupee's journey, India's currency in the global market and how it has risen over time. Hello everyone. Well, the glorious India that you see today was not all that hunky-dory when it all started. India's democratic freedom was unique among the world's newly independent states. The nation has faced religious violence, casteism, naxalism, terrorism, and regional separatist insurgencies. We were known to have the best of natural resources, minerals, etc. First the Mughals, then the British had plundered all of that. They left us with 16% literacy rate, no infrastructure, roads, power, and deep-rooted poverty. We were called as the land of snake charmers and peasants. Today, India is the biggest democracy with the average age being 29, which means we are potentially the youthful, productive, dynamic, young population ready to work and transform the world. We are also known as the pharmacy of the world, supplying 60% of generic medicines and vaccines globally. And the most dominant service sector contributes to 55% of India's GDP attracting significant foreign investments and providing large-scale employment with an expanding IT industry. India is considered a technological superpower and the world's office. As per the World Bank, the economy of India is growing at 9% on an average and is currently the world's fifth largest in terms of GDP. India's stock markets and rupee movement share a strong positive correlation. When the markets go up, rupee appreciates and vice versa. The FII holds 20% in Indian stock markets. We are a $3 trillion economy as of 2021. We aim to touch the $5 trillion economy by 2030, which also translates to becoming a global economic powerhouse, in turn, having a stable currency. According to me, simply put, the next 75 years, India has to reach the 95% literacy rate. There has to be equal distribution of income between all strata of people. Skill and reskilling to be prioritized. Inclusive growth, moral leaders and businessmen. Dependency on imports from other countries. By choosing Make in India products and moving towards manufacturing electric vehicles. It took us 75 years to reach where we are. We may just need half the time to become a global superpower, provided we do the right things in the right way. I also believe India should be a permanent member at the UNSC with the economic and military might by 2030, which can have huge influence like the other superpowers. Let the world hear it loud and clear. India is awake. We shall prevail and we shall overcome. Thank you.